Good morning, mushrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers, sisters, mothers, misters, and to all my cousins out there around the world, it's time to plug in and get this train to chug in. Hong Kong's new reality, it has begun for them, and I wish them the best of luck, because China, ooh, we got a lag there, China has imposed a sweeping national security law as Hong Kong marks its handover anniversary. And we had this phrase yesterday, a sweeping national security law. It's from coast to coast, side to side, much like you do with the broom. It is all encompassing, affecting every aspect of daily life. They are imposing this new law. Hong Kong didn't choose it themselves. China over here is imposing it on Hong Kong to impose on somebody and most countries have imposed curfews have imposed quarantines and shutdowns and lockdowns and so on it's to put restrictions onto somebody else they did not choose them for themselves um from time to time you might hear it as well like um yeah I'd, if you kind of join somebody for lunch maybe you go to a cafe and you see some people who you already know and say yeah may i join you for lunch i don't want to impose myself on you but i don't want to impose but if i could join you that would be wonderful it's to put something on to somebody else basically yeah okie dokie because this year is the handover anniversary and anniversary is the annual day on which something happens in which we celebrate or lament and um, regret the thing that happened uh, we have birthdays that's a form of anniversary you got wedding anniversaries all sorts of different anniversaries out there but this marks the handover in which after the 99 year lease expired the uk handed hong kong back over to china because they really in the end were just leasing it yeah wow 25 years I remember when I was in high school, a um, kid that I went to high school with, his parents were moving to Hong Kong in 97, the year that it was being handed back over to China. It's been quite a ride, but it looks like um, a lot of the fun and games are over. Moving on. U.S. expert testifies that the cases could go up to 100,000 a day if the current trend doesn't turn around. The trend right now is trending upwards and trending upwards rapidly. I believe there was 47,000 new cases in the U.S. just yesterday. I mean, we are breaking records. We are shattering records every day over there in the USA. And so a trend is just something that is happening. Normally we see this with fashion, but it could be sales trends or, well, there's any number of trends out there. It's just something that is happening at that point in time. Um, and the trend is going upwards and we want it to turn around and go the opposite direction. So turn around quite literally. Yeah, and so we say turn around and go the other way. And to testify is to give your official statements in court or in front of Congress before an official body of sorts. Often witnesses of a crime are called to testify in court to overturn an order. And so we've got an order that's like this, and if you're going to overturn it, you're going to turn it upside down. So if the order is functioning, then it's going to stop it from functioning. And so he's overturning the order that mandated Bolsonaro to wear a mask in public. Well, Bolsonaro didn't want to wear a mask and it helps when you stock the judiciary with judges that will do whatever you want. Classic strongman sort of tactic for ruling with an iron fist. Um, yeah, fire the good normal old judges and put your puppets in place. Somebody, his Ministry of Health, I guess, mandated, and it's an official, an official order that somebody has to do something. And so the Ministry of Health mandated that he had to wear a mask in public and he said, uh, 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 and he called up one of his judges and he said, remember that sweet, sweet job that I gave you? Uh, and the judge said, oh yeah, thanks. And so we're gonna just take that order and turn it over and so you don't have to wear a mask. Moving on. Temporarily blocks the publication of the Tell All book by Trump's niece. Obviously this is the point of interest here with the hyphen to tell all because she tells all, tells everything in the book. And so it's just a, a weird hyphenated adjective that we use for when people are then 
spilling the beans and letting all of the secrets out. It's a tell-all memoir, a tell-all autobiography, a tell-all book. Back to tourism news, yes, the U.S. tourists are officially not coming to Europe because, well, we can't get our virus under control. Au revoir, that means goodbye in French, and to bid someone au revoir, it means to say goodbye, say good day to you. Um, to bid, we normally use this, you may have seen it before, in auctions when you're, the item is being sold to the highest bidder and you bid on items in the auction. However, in a sort of archaic use of the word, we use that to wish somebody something. So, I, I bid you good day, sir. On to white supremacy. Elite German military units be disbanded over the far right links. Yes, a band. Let's say for the Beatles. Yeah, all right, it's a group of people. Phrasal verb for creating a band is to band together. Yeah, in times of difficulty, citizens of a community will often band together because there's strength in numbers, right? Well, this unit is going to be disbanded, broken up and split up because of their far right links. And so it will be completely wiped off the map and wiped out. All right, whatever. Putin's entire system of political power is, is at stake in a referendum. Now, the referendum is just when they give people a decision to make. They put it to the people, yes or no, basically. And often pieces of legislation will be just directly chosen democratically in a referendum, not necessarily voted in by the government itself. But if something is at stake, that means it is at risk. We've had it many times on the show, like high stakes poker, high stakes blackjack, means a lot of money on the table. Yeah, and so your stake is what you own, and if it's at stake, it is at risk, you're gambling with it, and yes, his entire system of political power is at risk in this referendum. He's taking a big risk, putting it out there and letting the people actually vote or voice their opinion regarding the system. Moving on to sexual assault news. We're looking here just about the passive and the language, right? They were awarded 19 million, and so they have been given. They were given 19 million dollars in a compensation fund. This fund is intended to compensate them for being victims of his sexual predatory practices and abuse, etc. Now, can you put a financial price tag on life and actions like that? No, the point being to compensate for something, to make up for that. Well, this happened, but we'll give you this and hopefully that makes up for that. We're awarded this by whom? By a judge, by a jury, I would suppose. In other passive news, a reduced passive, wildlife getting revenge. A woman was gored by a bison at Yellowstone National Park. We get this a couple times a year, actually, and people getting really close to those bisons, really close trying to take a picture with an animal that is bigger than uh, most small sedan and uh, notoriously ill-tempered. And so they just end up charging and going and sticking their horn through the person's body. That's what it is to be gored, to have an animal put a horn through you. Hmm. It sounds like a terrible way to die. And the lady was like 72 years old. What are you doing trying to... She was, she'd gotten like three meters from this huge buffalo, which is the size of a... or larger than a small car, and has a bad temper. Come on, you got better ways to spend your holiday. Simple one here, China, pandemics. Next one, another one coming. Ah, first time, yeah. Well, you're never bored when you get gored, right, Bert? Um, swine. Just another word for pigs. However, swine is usually used as a pretty derogatory term, a negative, pejorative term for pigs. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to the police as pigs, or then if they want to be especially colorful, swine. Now, I don't think in German it has the same negative connotation. It is just the word for that. Schweinfleisch. Me like some pork. All right, so yes, 
If everybody remembers the swine flu from a few years back, well, we've got another one coming, and it has genetic similarities to the 1918 pandemic and previous swine flu. Yay! Keep them coming. Let's wipe humanity out. Don't live with your chickens. Don't live with your pigs. Don't eat weird animals that are disease vectors. Tell you what, here's a great idea. Just eat a bunch of vegetables, huh? Leave the, leave, just leave the animals out of it and let them go live somewhere else, and we're going to stop the transmission of diseases from animals to humans. Ah, wow, stunning logic. Now, you may know the verb to decline, meaning to refuse an offer. If somebody says, ooh, would you like to try my soup? And you say, no thanks. That means that you have declined their offer. Here, we're not saying <laughs> declining eyesight. They're not saying no thank you to eyesight. Declining meaning going down, and going down means getting worse, just like many stock prices are declining at the moment. In most modern civilized countries, coronavirus cases are declining. <laughs> However, yes, declining eyesight can be improved, ooh, nice, we've got a modal and a passive, by doing what? By looking at red light. Um, before you just go start staring at traffic lights, I think you ought to read the article and let the scientists do a little bit more research before you just start burning your retinas out. And on to auctions. The winning bid came in at $84 million. And so that smashes the sales expectations. Maybe they thought it would go for just a cool 50 mil. No biggie, but apparently there were some passionate people at the auction and the bidding kept going up and up and up and eventually somebody outbid all of the other participants involved in the auction and they won it for 84 million. Yeah, and so that smashed or shattered expectations. And the executive described racism discussions as noise, yeah? And so apparently he just thought it was a bunch of nonsense and distracting from the real point, which is selling shoes and so on. Now facing public backlash and outrage over his comments, he's being kind of pushed out of his job, being forced to resign, most likely. And so he is stepping down. He's saying, thanks, bye-bye. So to step down from a position of power, usually as an executive or some sort of political leader. Flying snakes, how they can glide through the air. Now, you probably know glide from gliders, which are airplanes that have no engine, no manner of propulsion. Yeah, and so they really just glide, they float through the air, through the air without any additional propulsion, because um, snakes don't really fly. They're not flapping their wings or propelling themselves. However, I watched a little bit of the video, and yes, they found that the undulating motion, the slithering motion of snakes, by doing that, it can't really make them fly. However, it does stabilize their flight. To glide, to fly without an engine, much like if you're riding your bicycle and you're pedaling, pedaling, pedaling to propel yourself forward, and then if you stop pedaling and your momentum keeps carrying you forward, the verb for that is to coast coasting through life. Thankfully not radioactive, but here we have fallout, the Djokovic event fallout. Fallout, much like nuclear fallout from leaks or meltdown, fallout are the, is the negative after effects from resulting from some sort of situation or action. And as you know, um, they got a whole bunch of COVID spread around amongst tennis players. I'm not very, uh, I'm not very articulate today. Yeah, I had some breakfast, I had some coffee, I don't know what's wrong, but um, yeah, I'm not expressing myself as well as I would like today. To drive change means to be the person who is making it move forward. Moving on, really a wide variety. Often it's just Trump or just COVID, um, but yeah, we're all over the board to flying snakes, mountain kingdoms, and now LGBTQ art is thriving. It's doing very well. It's, it's very healthy, it's growing, it's spreading, it's flourishing. Yeah, just like if you move a, a plant from a plot, from the little pot into the garden and then it starts to grow really big really fast, yes, you could say it is thriving. It's growing and it's very healthy and robust. Geology. Yes, the largest tanzanite probably comes from Tanzania, don't know, would have to read. Gemstones. I've never liked this word gemstones because, I mean, a gem is the jewel and the gemstone, I guess it's a stone which has jewels in it. But, I mean, gems technically are stones, and so why say gemstones? It just feels redundant to me, but hey, I'm just an ignorant fool. I don't know anything about this topic. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds, lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Depicting, 
basically just means showing a picture of someone or something. So it's showing a picture of same-sex desire. Ooh, and desire means you really, really, really want something. And it's not just like, oh, I want the candy bar, but it's like a deep-seated emotional want, a yearning for it. It's more than just a craving like for salt or for sugar. No, it's that yearning, that need. It's interesting because Victorian, the Victorian time period was known for being um, very conservative. And uh, yeah, if a lady showed her ankle or her wrist, it was very risque. Yeah, well, apparently people were still showing some funky oogie boogie um, in their paintings. So moving on to the highlighting, it looks quite sparse to recycle some vocabulary. Not a lot of it. Urgent just means needs to be done now. Everyone's least favorite acronym, ASAP, as soon as possible. It's used so much and so often, it's really lost its meaning and it just becomes one of those hated, hated catchphrases. But urgent, needs to be done as soon as possible, needs to be done now. And, and really, if you ask me, there's a whole lot of people screaming and yelling and angry about this and that and getting in each other's faces and insulting each other, saying nasty things, doing nasty things, and I think It'd be a lot better if everybody just took a deep breath and calmed TF down. Look at all that. Those are the headlines. That was breaking down the news for English Otherwise. Most people know me as Mr. Janes, but if you made it this far, you can call me Cameron. Thanks to everybody out there for all the likes, subscribes, follows, shares, etc. And so keep the show rolling, keep the love going. And if I don't see you sooner, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Yes, stop the stream.